Today we're going to talk about polycystic ovarian syndrome. This is PCOS. Most people usually call it uh, ovarian cysts. And uh, yeah, it's one and the same thing. But we're going to look at what this actually is, how does it happen, and what are the, the causes, what usually cause this, and uh, some of the signs and symptoms, and some of the effects of having this condition, and also the treatment. And by the way, can you be able to get pregnant after maybe treating this condition? We're going to find out in this video. And it's very important for you to not skip any section of this video because it's packed and some of the sections will just be leading to the next section so it's very important for you to make sure that you watch all there to the end and if you like what you're doing give us a like by the way and um, give us a sub what is PCOS like we said this is polycystic ovarian syndrome and uh, before you get there let's first of all brush through for us to understand the whole process let's brush through the um, menstrual cycle and I'm sure by now everyone knows everything so I'm going to go just fast now the first one is in your brains we have a gland, the master gland called pituitary gland that usually produces a hormone that we call follicle stimulating hormone. This is what usually trigger maturation of a follicle that contain an egg in your ovary. Now after that, then after the maturation, uh, we have a hormone still produced by the um, pituitary gland located in your brain, what we call um, a hormone that we call luteinizing hormone. And this is what usually cause the ovulation. Now after ovulation, two things can happen. Now after ovulation, this is now the movement of that egg from the ovary to now the oviduct, what we call the fallopian tube, sometimes it can fall into the abdomen. But that's something else you're going to learn about that in the in, maybe in a later video. Um, now, in the oviduct, this is where now fertilization can take place. Now, in case maybe you met your partner and you had unprotected sex, then you're going to have a fertilization, which will now, after now uh, fertilization of that egg, will trigger production of what we call progesterone from the lemnans. Remember we said that it is, there's um, um, a sac that contains the egg. And now this sac, after the maturation, it's going, the egg will move out and go to now the oviduct for fertilization. Now the remnant where that egg was staying usually start producing progesterone to maintain the pregnancy. And that's why after you get pregnant, you don't get to see your menses again until you deliver. This is the work of the progesterone. Now, on the flip side, in case maybe there was no fertilization, what ends up happening is um, now after the egg gets to the uterus without fertilization, it triggers the demolition of the uterine wall because now it's not, yeah, it's not useful anymore. So that's when you start getting your menses. Now, PCOS you start getting where now you see you have a follicle that was formed. But then when it comes to ovulation, you don't ovulate, meaning that you're going to have just that follicle inside the ovary. And this follicle uh, that contains that egg, the egg did not mature enough to trigger ovulation, meaning it's just going to stay there. So you're going to have so many of them there. Now it will depend with the cycles. Now actually not depending. Now, after every cycle, you usually release one egg, and in yeah, rare cases, you release more than one. And uh, if there was no fertilization, or maybe if there was no um, ovulation, they are going to remain in the ovary, and they are going to pile up over time. So this is where you now get this condition, polycystic ovarian syndrome. A syndrome is a group of uh, symptoms which are grouped together, yeah, so it causes so many of those, like we're going to see it later. And uh, we have three features of PCOS. And the first one is cysts in your ovaries. The second one is a, a surge in the androgens. And we are going to see why this usually happen. And also, you are, you are going to have irregular menses because this is going to disrupt your cycles. Like we said, um, the ovulation usually trigger other activities like production of uh, estrogen or production of progesterone. So if this is not happening, then it means that the cycle is disrupted and you're not going to get a regular mens and you're going to see the effects of this later. Now, what are the causes? We have several and we're going to see them. And one major one, one that causes almost everything here, uh, accounting for around 70 to 80% of PCOS is weight. Now, before you get to weight, we have another cause, which is, uh, okay, let's say a minor, you might find PCOS running in families, meaning this is a genetical predisposition. The actual mechanism of causation of PCOS is not known, but we have factors that this is what now we are looking at that usually contribute to getting PCOS. Uh, like we said, genetical predisposition. We have uh, several genes being involved in this. So if you have issues with that, this can be passed down uh, the, the family, meaning that you can have this 
um, being inherited from the parents. So you might find families with this issue going all the way down. Now let's go to insulin resistance, which is where now we mentioned weight. This is a major contributor. We, we mentioned about 70-80% of those with PCOS. Now, this is due to insulin resistance and this is due to high amount of sugar in your body meaning that your system like a normal body will do is to produce insulin to counter the effect of high amount of sugar in your system now this will either contribute to you uh, storing more of um, the sugar that we are talking about here and uh, this will have effects you gain a lot of weight now having a lot of insulin in your system will trigger production of androgens like we said and this is because now you see you have that normal amount of insulin that was produced but now it's not working so the body still senses that you have a lot of sugar and it already produced the insulin so it goes ahead and produces more and this is what now will cause now the production of androgens and the androgens will now uh, cause the PCOS like we said it will inhibit ovulation this is where you're going to have the cascade of all the issues that you're going to see the effects and the symptoms that you're going to get now how do you know that you overweight BMI it's very simple just look for this uh, way you can be able to you use your weight against your height and this is how you figure out whether you are overweight or maybe you're obese there is that range you have a normal one Okay, another cause is inflammation. Now, we have a condition, especially being overweight, you are going to have a, a sustained inflammation level in your system, and this is very bad. It inhibits your female hormones and promotes the androgens, the male hormones, to grow in your system. And that's why you find that most of the people who are overweight, you might find that they, have, they start developing some hair, maybe they have beards or something. This is one of the issues that usually cause that. Now, um, you have excess, and, and this is now the, um, at the other side, when you have less weight. Now, this is, take this with a pinch of salt. When you do strenuous activity, or maybe you lose a lot of weight, you're going to underproduce um, female hormones, especially the estrogen, and this will promote production of uh, the male hormone, the androgens, and this is why you're going to find that you have acne, vaginal atrophy, you have all the issues that comes with that less estrogen. So this is when you lose a lot of weight, especially this mostly happens to those ladies who usually maybe go to the gym and uh, train excessively hard. And those who usually run marathons, they usually sometimes struggle with um, their uh, hormonal level. They usually suffer from hormonal imbalances. And that's why if you are an athletic and you're planning to settle down and have a family, you usually advise first of all to gain a certain amount of weight so that you get a, a good amount of fat in your body because production of estrogen will rely on cholesterol. What are the signs? Now, we have several here. And uh, like we mentioned, irregular periods. And uh, this is due to, now you're not ovulating, so you are now attacking some of the hormones. You're not producing them. And if that's happening now, it means that some of the um, stages when it comes to the menses will be affected and this is the reason why you're going to have uh, irregular periods and now the effects of this is sometimes when you're getting those periods you get very heavy periods irregular menses will cause heavy bleeding and this is because now you have maybe several months that you've not seen your menses now this is the accumulation you're supposed to lose this every month every every cycle which goes for a normal one is 28 days after every 28 days you're supposed to lose a chunk of that now that one a new one is formed now suppose now after three months you've not seen your menses it means that this is accumulation of four months or maybe those three months and uh, now when you're getting your menses everything is coming out so it means they're going to have a very heavy bleeding like we mentioned hair growth and this goes two ways now the first one is, is the scalp hair now you're going to lose that by having maybe a receding hairline the hairline keep going back or maybe you have some patches with no hair in your head and uh, the second phase is where you find that you have body hair outgrowing or maybe growing uh, more than normal. You find that you have uh, beards or maybe the hair on your chest, even your legs and hands. This is mostly due to um, the androgens that are high in your system. And this is a classical sign of PCOS. Now, another sign or maybe a symptom is acne. Now, acne is something that um, usually affects people with the high androgens. Now, you see testosterone will uh, cause you to increase the amount of um, sebum. Sebum is that oil that usually comes onto your skin to make it supple. Now, if 
you increase the amount, it means that the gland will become larger. The duct, which is supposed to lead now the oil from the gland all the way to the skin surface, is remaining the same. It means that it's likely going to get clogged. And when that gets clogged, you're going to have bacteria taking advantage of this situation. And you're going to have an inflammation, and this is how you're going to have that acne spot. Now, another sign is weight gain. Okay, this goes both ways. Now, if you gain a lot of weight, uh, you're most likely going to have PCOS. And... Uh, if you have PCOS, this is going to also contribute to you continue being overweight. I don't know whether that is. It goes both ways. It's a cat and mouse game. So it goes all the way around. So one triggers the other, the other one triggers the other. The other one, which is due to insulin resistance, is something we've been seeing every now and then. This is acanthosis nigricans. And um, this is usually that hyper, hyperpigmentation of where the skin falls, mostly at the neck region and also under your breasts, your groin area, under your armpits. And this is mostly accompanied by skin tags on your skin, especially on your face around this point and this point around this area here. You're going to have skin tags and uh, this is a high indication that you have insulin resistance. Another one which is I think quite common is frequent headaches that have no reason. You get headaches every now and then. Your hormones. Just look at your hormones. They might be a contributing factor here. Now, let's go to the effects. If you have PCOS, what is most likely going to happen? The first one, like we said, okay, we've alluded, is infertility. If you have ovaries that are overridden by so many cysts, that ovary becomes less efficient. So you're not going to actually have viable pregnancy out of this and also the fact that uh, you're going to disrupt your hormones it means that now the cycle will get disrupted now take for example you're getting your menses after every maybe three months or maybe another after six months it means that um, now your chances of getting pregnant are very low menses are usually triggered by ovulation if you're not ovulating you're not going to have the menses now pcos will contribute to you having remember we said that pcos can contribute to you being overweight and also overweight can contribute to you being or having the, the pcos now this can contributes to you having metabolic syndrome where you're going to have high blood sugar and this can trigger high BP which is blood pressure. Also uh, you have low HDL which is high density lipid which is very important in, in your system. You really need to have this and you have a high amount of LDL which is low density lipid which is not a good thing to have because it's um, it contributes to being overweight and also increases um, your cardiac diseases the diseases that usually affect your heart another effect of pcos is sleep apnea this is i'm sure you've seen this okay maybe you've heard you find that someone is kind of forgetting to breathe uh, at night so it's kind of the they pause they're not breathing and then they start breathing while snoring at the same time it's kind of, they are struggling to push the air out and gasp some more in and this can uh, contribute to them having very Mm, what do you call very unhealthy sleep because this can trigger them waking up because if you're not breathing well you'll try to struggle up and most of the time they usually breathe with their mouth so mostly they're not breathing through their nose and if they do that then there's no a lot now another effect of pcos is an increased risk of contracting or getting ovarian cancers or the uterine cancers now you're supposed to get your eggs out during your ovulation if they they are not if you're not getting that ovulation they're accumulating there you're increasing the chances of getting a cancer there also after at the end of every month you're supposed to have your lining being refreshed you have the uterine uh, lining going out in form of your menses and then a new uh, layer is formed every month so if you're not getting this out the accumulation of this lining might lead to an increased risk of ovarian cancers of the uterine wall now another one which is uh, okay my tend to think this is quite common because i hear this with almost every person depression now okay stress and depression depression can be the yeah the extreme end now this usually happened because of several things one is psychological the other one is just because your hormones are not functional uh, hormones usually affect your mood all the time. So if you are having hormonal imbalances, then you're going to have uh, so many frequent episodes of this. So you're going to have issues with your psychology every time. So now when it comes to you know, the psychology part, um, you are developing male 
characteristics like you have beards you have hair on your chest now this will lower your self esteem you have a lot of hair your b body hair your a girl is supposed to be smooth yeah, yeah, yeah and all that you are losing your scalp hair you are you are, you are balding you are, your hairline is receding this is prone to creating a lot of chaos in your brains and this is what will cause that depression the stress that you're going to get and you get that stress the stress initially contribute you having uh, cortisol now this cortisol will contribute to having an inflammation that will be sustained for a long period of time and like we mentioned about that uh, the effects of the causes of PCOS one of which is the inflammation so the domino effect another effect is an increase in risky pregnancies now in case you so happen to uh, conceive at this point then uh, you see your system like we've uh, we have been um, describing you have so many issues with your system so sustaining that pregnancy might become an issue where you're going to have miscarriage you might have miscarriage you might have um, uh, gestational diabetes especially if you are over it and you become pregnant so it's very very important for you to have uh, a good body weight before you get pregnant because there's a high risk of you getting uh, gestational diabetes which if not treated it can uh, yeah graduate to type 2 diabetes now we have high blood pressure like we mentioned if you are overweight or if you have high um, amount of um, ldl cholesterol this is low density lipid if you have a lot of that they are prone to clogging your arteries and now this will force your heart to use extra force to force blood through them and this is how you're going to have that high blood pressure we have been talking about pcos and so many information about them mm, you're not tired let's talk about how do we diagnose how do you know that you have that and how do we treat this now how do you, your doctor determine that you have PCOS? Now, the first thing is just direct observation. Now, if you have acne, you are having a body hair, like you, are, you have beards, and uh, you have those male characteristics. You also have some issues when it comes to your menses. It means that you might be having PCOS. And uh, we have other things we can do, like blood tests. Now, you get your blood taken to the laboratory, and hormones are usually measured from that blood. In case maybe there is a hike in uh, the male hormones, you have to understand that uh, women will also have some tiny amount of androgens, which is supposed to be very low. And also men are supposed to have female hormones, and they're supposed to be very low. So men, the majority of the dominant hormone is testosterone and estrogen will be very very minute when it comes to ladies we'll have the opposite so they are going to have something like estrogen being high so you're going to have a lot of that and you're going to have a tiny amount of androgens one of which is testosterone so in case that happens that you have a high amount of testosterone that means that you might be suffering from pcos another classic sign okay this is not indicative but this can be used um in addition to the things that we've mentioned is a lipid profile where we look at the lipids that you have in your system and the types that you have so if you have a high amount of uh, ldl and uh, you have a low amount of HDL, this can be a collaboration to some of the symptoms that maybe you might be showing. So it can be used also to contribute to your diagnosis. Another one which is very classical, this is ultrasound. Now, after we've seen the signs, we've tested, and uh, we now know exactly now mm, you're having this issue, and this other, maybe you have a high amount of androgens and you have a lower amount of uh, female hormones. Yeah, um, you're taken for an ultrasound where now the imaging of the ovaries are usually taken and this is where we are go going to now visualize or see the cysts. Now if they are there, they, this is a confirmation. And now we go to the treatment. In the treatment, nothing beats the lifestyle. Before you go to the drugs that we can use, first of all, what do you do? First of all, diet. Very important. You will really need to lose weight. If you are overweight, you really need to lose that by using low carbohydrate diets and a low glycemic index foods like uh, fruits and vegetables. Now, you really need to exercise. And if, for example, you are underweight, you really need to gain a lot of weight. Okay, not a lot. You gain. You need to gain a certain amount of weight to go into within the BMI index, which is normal. You're supposed to have that. I think it's between 18 to 25, around that. So you're supposed to have that within that area. So in case you are overweight, you really need to exercise. And you're going to combine a lot of things. So like what I usually advise people is create a deficit. Just create a deficit. Okay, you're supposed to take food in your 
through your digestive system and this is what usually provide you with uh, what you're going to use like the power or the energy that you're going to use on daily basis if you decrease that then your body will um, try to look into the stores and uh, the stores this is the fat so it, it, it will try to burn fat and uh, try to get energy from that and this will give you an advantage of losing that body weight so you really need to lose that this is very important because like we've mentioned 70 to 80 percent of people with pcos are struggling with weight so you really need to shed that off now uh, let's go to the actual medical treatments in case maybe this is not working your weight is still there you are not having uh, you are not even gaining weight uh, you're trying everything so you're still annoyed so there are several things that we can do one of which is balancing your hormones using um, the birth control pills and this will, uh, first of all, mm, restore the hormonal imbalances. In case you have hormonal imbalances, uh, this pill will help you uh, be able to do that. And um, this will help in regulating the ovulation. Mm? Like, there's a drug that you're going to see, Retalon, still on treatment, that usually trigger uh, ovulation. And this can be used to trigger uh, you getting back your menses. And mostly, people, especially when you are on a long-term contraceptives when uh, maybe you so decide to remove them and uh, you want to get pregnant again there is something that we call jump starting i think we should talk about that um okay we are going to make a video on what you should do after you get out of your long-term contraceptives and uh, yeah so there's a drug that is actually given to jump start your ovulation and uh, this will now bring back your menses now uh the birth control pills uh, most of which are, uh, they can either be progesterone based or maybe they are estrogen based. They usually help by reducing the amount of um, body hair or the male characteristics that you're going to gain due to you having a high amount of androgen. So they're going to suppress that and you're going to now get rid of your hair, the body hair and uh, the acne spots that you're going to have due to you having Im hormonal imbalances. Another treatment option is um, controlling the insulin resistance. Mostly you're going to go through the diabetic uh, patient's pathway where you're going to be given something like metformin that will help in uh, sensitizing your insulin so that the little amount of insulin you have will be effective at controlling the amount of sugar you have in your system. Now this is treating the symptom. Like I said, you really need to shed your weight and reduce the amount of sugar that you are taking so that you give your body an easy time so that now the uh, the little amount of uh, insulin that you have will be effective because every time if you keep bombarding your, your body with the sugars then uh, they're not going to help at all because you'll continue treating the symptom you're going to continue taking metformin and uh, this is just treating the symptom now if you treat this like we said if you have a high amount of insulin in your system it means that um you're going to produce a lot of androgens and if you so take metformin that will make sure that they're little amount of um, insulin you have will be effective and it means that you're not going to overproduce this insulin and you're going to not produce the androgens as a result we have fertility drugs like we mentioned or something like clomid which is clomiphene now this one usually trigger ovulation and this is what usually jump start mostly those people who've been on long-term um contraceptives if you've been using that for a long time and uh, after stopping you still don't get your menses then uh, you can use this drug that will be given by your fertility doctor to trigger you to ovulate and after ovulation you're going to start getting your menses and uh, um, you really need to be careful with this drug because mostly in case you use this there is a high chance of you getting multiple baths or multiple conceptions because it triggers production of or uh, release of more than one egg. So you might get those twins or maybe quadrupeds or yeah, you're going to have multiple baths, which is a risky pregnancy. Yeah, so you really need to be careful about this drug. The final one, last result, is uh, surgery. Now we have a type of uh, surgery, laparoscopic surgery. Uh, we are drilling, we call it ovarian drilling, whereby uh, a certain tube with a camera that will be inserted uh, through your navel into where the ovaries are, then they make some holes into the ovary to trigger ovulation and also reaction of your ovaries to the hormones that are surrounding. So now this will restore 
your normal functioning of the ovary. Now, I'm sure by now you are gaining value and in case you are doing that, then uh, give us a sub and also like the video, share to those people you know, yeah, that will be interested. And I'm on uh, all the platforms in case you're interested on Twitter, and Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, where we started. I go by the same name, the health wise. So in case you're interested, you can just go meet us there. See you in the next video.